Each year, Chrysler comes out with a new lineup of vehicles. Some of the vehicles you may be seeing for the first time, while others are carried over from the previous year. But with each vehicle, new or carryover, comes the constant challenge of making it a little better. Well, just as improvements are being made to vehicles, improvements are also being made to the DRB3. And as with Chrysler vehicles, some of these changes you'll notice right away, but others aren't quite so noticeable. Hi, and welcome to Master Tech. This month, we're going to talk about some of the improvements made to the DRB3 software through release 16. We'll cover mainly changes and enhancements to the DRB3 in standalone mode. We'll review the organization of standalone diagnostics. We'll discuss some new user-friendly features and updates to the built-in digital voltometer. And we'll take a closer look at some of the DRB3's diagnostic features. Let's get started by discussing DRB3 menus and some user-friendly features. As we mentioned earlier, most of the enhancements we'll discuss in this program affect the DRB3 in standalone mode. But before we look at some of the added features that will make the DRB3 easier to use, Let's review how to navigate through menus and discuss an easy way to identify where information is found. Remember, you can use the up and down arrow keys to highlight your desired menu selection. Then press enter. Or you can simply press the number of the desired selection on the keypad. For our purposes, we'll choose engine from the select system menu. The select function menu is where the confusion may occur. Sometimes it's not easy to tell where you'll find some of the information you need. For example, it's easy to find something with the name sensor in it, like throttle position sensor voltage under sensors. However, it may be more difficult to find injector pulse width under sensors, but it's easy if you remember that anything with a variable output, such as voltage, temperature, or minutes, is found under sensors. Similarly, anything with two state data, such as open, closed, or on, off, will be found under input, output. Under monitors, you'll find a template of displays related to a specific subject. For example, the fuel control menu item will let you look at a preset list of sensors all related to fuel control. Selecting actuators will allow you to test the function of an item. This lets you test input-output devices and observe output readouts while checking sensor values. The test will automatically stop after a preset period of time, or you can stop the test by pressing the F4 or Stop key. After actuators is a new selection for some vehicles. OBD2 monitors. This will be discussed in detail later in the program. Finally, the last option on the select function menu is miscellaneous. When a vehicle has the OBD2 monitors option, miscellaneous will be on page two of the menu. Remember, the left and right arrow keys are used to move within multi-page menus. The miscellaneous option contains a variety of operations not belonging to any of the other categories. You'll find things like reset memory and SRI memory check under miscellaneous. Now that you know where to find information when performing vehicle diagnostics, let's take a look at some new features that will make the DRB3 easier to use. But first, try this review question. When trying to find the status of a park neutral position switch in standalone vehicle diagnostics, you should look under A, sensors, B, input output, or C, OBD2 monitors. The answer is B. Since the status of the park neutral position switch is either park neutral or drive reverse, you would find it under input output. There are several user friendly features that have been added to the DRB3 since its introduction. Other existing features have been updated. Let's take a look at some of these features beginning with contrast control. Contrast control, as you may remember, is not a new feature. When you press the yes and page forward keys simultaneously, you enter the contrast control adjustment screen. 
Then you can use the up and down arrows to adjust contrast. However, there were some instances where the contrast was adjusted too high or too low. Then the next time the DRB3 was powered up, the screen was blank and it looked as though the DRB3 was not working properly. But now Chrysler engineers have installed a contrast check when the DRB3 is powered up. At power up, the DRB3 looks for contrast to be within a certain range. If the current contrast is higher or lower than the normal range, the DRB3 will reset the contrast so it is within the range. However, this set range may not be appropriate for certain conditions, such as very warm or very cold ambient temperatures. So when contrast control is adjusted at power up, the first screen the DRB3 will show is the contrast control adjustment screen. You'll need to adjust the screen as necessary for your conditions. In addition, when the DRB3 gets hotter, the screen gets lighter. This can make the DRB3 difficult to read. But now the automatic contrast feature adjusts the contrast at set intervals to prevent the screen from getting too light. In the January 1994 Master Tech, we also mentioned a backlight feature. This feature, unlike the screen contrast, has not been changed. But just a reminder, the backlight feature automatically comes up when the DRB3 is powered up. It can be turned off and on again by pressing the DVOM key and YES key at the same time. Now let's go to the standalone main menu. A new addition to this menu is cable usage help. This will aid technicians by giving the correct cable number for the vehicle and system to be diagnosed. Keep in mind that all 1994 and later MMC and Diamond Star vehicles, except 94 Laser and Talon, use the double-headed connectors. In addition, there is one cable listed under Cable Usage Help that was not included in your DRB3 kit. This cable, CH7500, is required for the DRB3 to communicate with certain Jeep and Eagle vehicles using the adapter JE1000. This cable is available with SuperCard CH8000 in kit CH8001 or separately through OTC. We'll discuss the SuperCard a little later in the program. There are also several new features that will be helpful when performing diagnostics. Previously, we mentioned that the F4 key is the stop key. Now let's take a look at the function of the other F keys. F1, of course, is the help key. However, currently this key will only provide help under the new OBD2 monitors option. But don't worry, more help is on the way. So keep an eye out for additional help in future releases. The F2 key is used to return to the select system menu when you're in another system. So, say for example, you're looking at some engine input-output values. Then you decide you want to look at transmission input-output readouts. Instead of backing up through the menus to get to the Select System menu, you can simply press the F2 key. Similarly, pressing the F3 key will return you to the main menu. Besides the F key functions, more new features have also been added to the DRB3. Let's take a look we'll go to engine sensors for our example. Just as before, you need to use the arrow keys in order to move through lists of data or between pages. But now there is a new feature that's useful when concentrating on just one sensor readout. Highlight one sensor and press the enter key and the DRB3 will display only that sensor. This not only makes the sensor output easier to read, but it will also speed up the rate at which the DRB3 gathers the data. Pressing the Enter key again will return you to the full page of data. Another new feature is Scroll Lock. With more than one page of data, this feature allows you to lock the highlight bar in any position you want and scroll the data through it, instead of scrolling the highlight bar down through the data. To use Scroll Lock, Place the highlight bar in the position you desire. Then press the shift key to activate the feature. The red LED on the shift key will be illuminated when scroll lock is activated. With scroll lock activated, the highlight bar will stay in one place 
and the data can be scrolled up through the bar using the arrow key. Key repeat, like you find on a computer, has also been added to the DRB3. Now, instead of pressing the down arrow multiple times to move down the display or through menus, you can just press it once and hold it down. In the next section, we're going to take a better look at a useful feature you may remember from a previous Master Tech, the built-in digital volt ohm meter. But first, try to answer this question. In order to return to the DRB3 main menu, when you're in the engine system, you should use A, F1, B, F2, or C, F3. The answer is C. The F3 key is used to return you to the main menu. From its initial release, one important feature of the DRB3 has been its built-in digital volt ohm meter, or DVOM for short. With the DVOM function, you can use the DRB3 to measure voltage, resistance, temperature, and current. Now let's take a closer look at the DVOM feature and some changes it has undergone since the introduction of the DRB3. First, do you remember how to access the DVOM function? Just press the DVOM key on the DRB3 keypad. Next, you'll need to set up the channel or channels of the DVOM to take the appropriate reading. Remember, you can take two different measurements simultaneously. For example, you can measure voltage on channel 1 and resistance on channel 2. Use the left or right arrow key to place the highlight bar on the channel you want to set up first. Then use the Enter key or Page Forward key to toggle forward through the DVOM selections. The Page Back key will move through the list of options backwards. Under Some Options, you'll find sub-menu selections. For example, under Current, you have Low Range, Mid Range, and High Range options. Use the Down Arrow key to move to the sub-menu. Then press the Enter key to move through the options. Then, if you choose to, you can repeat this process with the other channel. Once you have chosen the DVOM options you wish to monitor, you can either leave the DVOM readout full screen or press the DVOM key again to go back to the diagnostic function or menu you were at before entering the DVOM function. This will place the DVOM readouts at the bottom of the screen. Pressing DVOM at this point will terminate the DVOM function. You must terminate the current DVOM functions before changing the readout option. Now let's take a look at each of the options you may choose when using the DVOM. Option 1 is voltage. Under voltage, you have the option of measuring in AC or DC on an auto-ranging scale up to 500 volts. With the DRB3 voltmeter, you have the option of using a single positive test lead, for example when measuring the voltage of a fuse, or a set of test leads, like when measuring voltage drop. Next on the list is ohms. The DRB3 ohm meter is capable of measuring resistance up to 1.12 mega ohms. To measure resistance, place the object between the test leads. Be sure the object being tested is not connected to voltage. Like voltage, the DRB3 resistance measurement is also auto-ranging, and you may hear a clicking from the unit due to this feature. Third is current. Under current, you have three sub-menu options, low range, mid range, and high range. Low range is 0 to 2 amps, and mid range is 2 to 10 amps. Both are measured using the low current shunt. Remember how to use this? With the shunt hooked up to the DRB3, plug the black lead into the shunt's common negative port. Then the red lead goes to the 2 amp or 10 amp port, depending on the expected current through the device. Try the 10 amp port first if you're not sure what the current is. High range current readings up to 2000 amps are done using the current clamp. Place the clamp over the wire to be tested and select the appropriate range, 0 to 200 or 0 to 2,000 amps. Remember, the clamp should not be used to test current under 10 amps. If you should happen to get a negative current reading on the DRB3, 
simply turn the clamp around. See the January 1994 Master Tech for further discussion of both the clamp and the shunt. Under temperature, choose either Fahrenheit or Celsius. Then the temperature probe can be used to measure air, liquid, or surface temperature. The last two options on the list are new. Number five on the list, the frequency generator option, can be used to simulate a frequency, such as a wheel speed sensor frequency. You'll need to enter the desired frequency and duty cycle using the DRB3 keypad. Frequency measurement, the last option, is used strictly to measure frequency and duty cycle. Finally, we have the read hold key. We save this for last because the read hold key can be used both for general diagnostic use and with the DVOM. For general diagnostic use, pressing the read hold key pauses the data on the screen. For example, a sensor display so it's easier to read. But read hold works a little differently with the DVOM. Remember we mentioned previously that you can keep the DVOM full screen or switch back to your diagnostic procedure, keeping the DVOM display at the bottom of the screen. When the DVOM display is full screen, the read hold key can be used to pause the DVOM readout. With the DVOM at the bottom of the screen, the read hold key will only pause the diagnostic data, not the DVOM readout. This lets you concentrate on the DVOM readout while you pause the diagnostic outputs in order to view them easily. In our next section, we're going to take a more in-depth look at some of the diagnostic options, but we can't do that quite yet. Not until we try this review question. To move forward through the DVOM selections, you should use A, the Enter key, B, the Down Arrow key, or C, the Up Arrow key. The answer is A. The Enter key, or Page Forward key, is used to move forward through the DVOM menu selections. Since its introduction, the diagnostic capabilities of the DRB3 have significantly increased. The DRB3 now includes more diagnostic tests and covers a wider range of vehicles. Part of the increased vehicle coverage is due to SuperCard CH8000, which we mentioned earlier in the program. This is a removable memory card, which supplies the DRB3 with additional vehicle applications, 1983 to 1993 Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, and MMC and Diamond Star vehicles, and 1987 to 1993 Jeep and Eagle vehicles. The memory card is only compatible with standalone DRB3 software release 14 or greater. Be sure your DRB3 is updated before trying to run the memory card program. And when using the memory card, be sure never to remove it from the DRB3 when the SuperCard logo is displayed. Now you should be all set to run diagnostics for most any vehicle that comes your way. And speaking of diagnostics, Let's take a look at one new diagnostic feature you'll find on Release 16. On the Select System menu, option number 8 is now Vehicle Module Scan and CCD Bus, replacing System Monitors. Selecting option 1 in this menu, Vehicle Module Scan, will trigger the DRB3 to scan each of the control modules on vehicles equipped with a single diagnostic connector. The DRB3 will display the version number of each module and indicate the presence of any diagnostic trouble codes. So instead of going into each system to find out if any DTCs are present, the DRB3 does the legwork for you. In addition to finding DTCs, the DRB3 is helpful in many other ways. Let's take a look at a couple of examples of system tests to give you an idea of what else the DRB3 can help you do. System tests are available in most systems. Under Engine, we find several system tests. The Fuel Injector Kill Test is one of them. In the Auto version of this test, the DRB3 will kill each of the fuel injectors separately and let you know when a cylinder is not working properly. To run this test, the engine must be loaded. 
The DRB3 will instruct you on what you need to do before the test is run to load the engine. Once the engine is loaded, unplug the IAC motor four-way connector as instructed by the DRB3. Press enter on the DRB3 and the test will be run. The DRB3 may test each cylinder up to three times if a problem is suspected. When all injectors have been tested, resulting RPM readings are displayed. When the RPM drop of an injector is at zero, or is significantly lower than the others, like it is here, you know there's a problem with this cylinder. To check for accuracy, you can run the test again simply by pressing the Enter key. The generator full field test is another system test that is available on some vehicles. This lets you full field the generator with the push of a button on the DRB3. You'll need to use the DVOM with an amp clamp or a separate ammeter to run this test. Then you have the choice to test the generator under present load conditions or full fielded. Select your choice using the DRB3 keypad. See your service manual or the generator identification tag for the rated output of the generator you're testing. Transmission system tests are similar to their engine counterparts. Remember, use the F2 key to quickly return to the Select System menu. For the 1995 Cirrus and Stratus, there are three transmission system tests available, including the shift lever test. This is a pass-fail test that will indicate if the console shift lever position is in agreement with a transmission range switch. Move the shift lever through the positions indicated on the DRB3. After all positions have been tested, the DRB3 will let you know if the test has passed or failed. When performing transmission diagnostics, don't forget that a clutch test is also available to monitor the clutch for slippage by observing input and output RPMs. So, do you get an idea of what system tests can do now? Good. Now, before we conclude for this month, let's take a look at one final option of DRB3 standalone diagnostics, OBD2 monitors. Monitors specific to OBD2 have been placed in their own category. This is because there just got to be too many monitors to place them all under the regular engine monitors option. Under OBD2 monitors, you can check the status of all OBD2 monitors and look at each monitor individually. The OBD2 monitors menu also includes several pretest options, such as upstream O2 sensor pretest and EGR pretest. These pretest options give you the current conditions of the vehicle. By looking at the pretest, you can see what is necessary to get the vehicle to testing conditions. Remember, the help function is active under OBD2 monitors. The help screen will provide you with information on the proper parameters to allow the monitor to run. With OBD2 vehicles, you'll also notice that the diagnostic trouble code display has changed. The new display will include the Chrysler DTCs and the SAE P codes. Remember, on OBD2 vehicles, don't erase the DTCs yet. First, make your diagnosis and repair. Then run a global good trip. After completing a global good trip, the DTCs can be erased. Finally, on some vehicles, there are also OBD2 transmission-related monitors. However, since there are only two, the transmission monitors have not been placed in a separate category. They are accessed like other transmission monitors by choosing the option Monitor Display. Currently, the only vehicle which includes the OBD2 transmission monitors, freeze frame, and ETAX task manager is the 1996 minivan. Well, that gives you a little better idea of how helpful the DRB3 can be when it comes to diagnostics. But before you stop the tape, try this one last review question. To find out if a single diagnostic connector vehicle contains any diagnostic trouble codes, you should A read DTCs for the engine, B, read DTCs for each system on the vehicle, or C, do a vehicle module scan. The answer is C, 
When vehicle module scan is chosen, the DRB3 will look at each module and indicate which ones have trouble codes present. So that brings us to the end of another Master Tech. This month we've looked at many of the updates made to the DRB3 since its introduction through release 16. And of course, the changes won't stop here. Look for more changes to be introduced with release 17 and on into the future. So long, and we'll see you next month on Master Tech.